Hey, hey, y'all. Uh, welcome to this uh, not quite tutorial, but video walkthrough of a very okay piano song. a recording didn't you know <laughs> clever Warren he's got some tricks up his sleeve um, that was me playing uh, a little MIDI controller that uh, I have to use because since I moved to Massachusetts um, because my wife got into grad school here I have no piano so uh, this ended up being a blessing in disguise because um, Liam, the customer who uh, requested this, uh, you're famous now, Liam. Um, <clears throat> he requested a song off of OK Computer called How I Made My Millions. It's a B-side that was recently remastered and everything um, that uses a really peculiar piano sound, one that I probably wouldn't be able to emulate uh, whatsoever uh, using a real piano. So. Um, in order to kind of get the, the, the realism and kind of the character of this really funky sounding, out of tune, upright piano, um, I turned to some software that I've been using for like a really long time and they're not paying me for this um, whatever thing you can call this, but um, Piano Tech made by Modart and uh, they've been in business for like a long time like I bought it once back in 2009 or something and they just keep updating it and I'm like cool I get all this awesome piano uh, plug-in stuff to use and um, they let you choose from a whole bunch of pianos and the one that I landed on for for this particular song in case y'all are uh, piano tech fans or uh, you know piano modeling enthusiasts was a very out of tune upright piano that I tweaked. I even tweaked specific notes up or down a few cents. Um, and there are 100 cents per, per half step for those of you, you know, who are like normal and you don't care about this really music theory nerd stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I, I tweaked it so that certain notes were sharper and flatter so that it would just kind of give this effect of uh, a really peculiar sounding aged worn out piano um, now with all that uh, said um, I wanted to walk you through uh, this very very cool song again uh, commissioned by Liam and uh, Liam just just wanted to know what was going on with this song and I thought hey you know I don't have a piano right now so maybe I can do this MIDI walkthrough which is great because if you look at it over here, <clears throat> um, what do I got? On Ableton, let me stop it. Uh, you can see the uh, the information in this MIDI track that I've created when I was transcribing this song is is pretty crazy. You can you can see there's a lot going on here. Okay. And if we look at kind of the, uh, yeah, the volume, right? There's a lot of variation in terms of uh, how to get this phrasing um, just right. You know, this kind of, I'm not saying I got this, you know, exactly 100% uh, as far as like the note velocity, but just to really kind of get a sense of how the, the piano is coming in and being more intense and then when it's kind of pulling back and kind of being a little bit more coy there's there's a lot of that going on and it's pretty cool that you you can't actually see that in a piece of sheet music but you can see it here in the MIDI track and this MIDI track will be available to to everybody who who wants to get this um, it's gonna be up for a profit split so that I'm gonna take some for for making this but some of the proceeds half of them are gonna go to a charity 
uh, promoting community education, um, access to technology, um, community access to technology. It's education too, but I mean, it's really just access to technology and um, it's a cool charity I heard about a few weeks ago and I did some research. They're called Black Girls Code. So um, with all that said, this MIDI track is really packed full of uh, valuable musical information here. Now the song itself is really only four chords. It's got the uh, A, and then it's got the uh, C sharp minor, and then it kind of goes back to that, and and then it goes to another chord, which is a, a D, and then the two chord, which is the B minor. Oh, not the not the B major. <laughs> there you go. Not the minor seven either, just the B minor. Okay, and then right. So really only four chords. That's if you've been following in the key of A major, the one chord, the three chord, and then back to the one chord. And then it heads to the four chord and then the two chord. And there are only six diatonic chords in the key of A, so a song that uses only four of the six very typical chords would classify in my book as a very simple song. Now, simple doesn't always mean bad. Simple oftentimes means gorgeous and beautiful. And Tom York manages to, you know, imbue this song with so much soul and and uh, substance, despite the fact that there are only four chords in the song. Now, one thing that makes those four chords a little more interesting, okay, uh, is the rhythmic way that he's arpeggiating the chords. And arpeggiating simply just means, you know, breaking up the chord and kind of going dun 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 you know. Um, so he's arpeggiating the chords in a very rhythmic way. And the song in, t in its entirety is basically him arpeggiating in terms of eighth notes. So like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And there's a lot of variation with how he chooses to arpeggiate um, the way that he voices the chords are changed too so that lends another dimension to it um, which is not super super relevant for like a basic understanding of how the song works but the other thing that he does to make it interesting he starts to pull notes in from the a major scale and that's very just those notes okay so what do I mean by he starts to pull notes in? He starts to do some melodic movement and kind of switching out certain notes for other notes to make it sound a little bit more colorful. And so when you combine all that, four basic chords is really not so basic anymore. It starts to get more and more nuanced and detailed. Um, so that's kind of how I view the, the, the basic approach to you know, getting into kind of the mind of uh, Tom York as he's composed this song. Now, another thing to keep in mind is it's a demo. Uh, I don't really think they ever released it. Um, and my guess is they actually did, saved certain chunks of it. Tom specifically cannibalized the song. You know, stuff came out. <laughs> that, was, that was not necessary <laughs> to do that. So anyway... The song came in one way and then came out another way, and certain parts of it reemerged in like spinning plates, and you actually um, have some of the same chords, some of the same arpeggiations, and uh, it's pretty cool how, how that ended up happening. But let's walk through the piano, finally, after nine and a half minutes, um, note for note, exactly what is kind of going on here. So the song starts out, uh, we'll, we'll use the worn out piano sound. The song starts out um, <clears throat> with this A chord, and we'll hear it right here. What is going on? I need to 
turn that grand piano off. Sorry about that. So there we go. Now let's do this one more time from here. It's just four of these chords, four of these A's, and then we're going to head to first little kind of modification of a chord and that's just a, e, a, e, 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 e. where we get this first kind of variation in the chord. So we have this kind of rhythmic eighth note thing, and then we go to the, the next chord, this three chord, okay? Three, five, seven, it's called the three chord. It's a minor, C-sharp minor chord. And that note, that high note, becomes this ninth note of the scale, uh, AKA B, okay? It's a B above the A, right? So that ninth note of the scale sounds really nice, especially when you kind of lean into the note a little bit. And I have the sustain pedal down, AKA my sustain finger, right there, to let the high note ring out and kind of just, you know, have this little shimmery long tail. And um, holding that sustain pedal down can be a really, really good um, level of depth to, to add to this. You know, otherwise you're just kind of playing these notes and everything is disappearing as soon as you let go of the key. But with the sustain pedal, all of these notes start to, even though they're arpeggiated, they start to form one block of a chord sound. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing. It's called a broken chord. And it's like one of my favorite things about harmony, period. Just broken chords in general. Um, so lift the pedal up, of course, when you go to a new chord. Now, when does a new chord come? Th does that mean when you change the 7 to the 9? No, that's not a new chord. That's still the same basic chord, and then you change out one of those notes for that variation within the chord. But once you go back to... hear that note right there I go to the new chord when the new bass note comes in and that's when I let go of the sustain pedal so the the chord can get washed out and then the new chord comes in so that's that's the basic idea between those two chords okay and then after uh, a few more measures we're gonna go to this new chord this D major right here <laughs> breaking it up because I don't want to get this copyright flagged stupid content ID hate you YouTube but love you sometimes Where is it? okay I'm sorry here's the new chord okay so that's your B minor now we had the low D which sounds like this It's just a really simple figure. We got a low D, which is okay. That's your low four in the key of A, and then a high four and an A four, A four, A four, which is D, D above that D. And the highest note would be that A from the original chord. So your left hand would come down for this low D, and then this. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. You see, you hear the, the spinning plates reference now? It's kind of like, a, um, I show it to you. Um, how does it go? So 
there's some I, I can't I have, I don't have enough octaves on this stupid thing but anyway like spinning plays uses the exact same uh, arpeggiation shape there yeah, it's pretty cool uh, so it's cannibalized comes out the other way um so we got this D major, okay, which is only three notes there, and then the B minor, which has this arpeggiation right here. It's a very peculiar shape where you go. So we go up the scale, two, four, six, which is a B, D, F sharp, and then it comes back to the D of the chords, so two, four, six, four, nine. Ninth note of the scale, two, four, six, four, nine, nine, four. So that's the, the shape of that particular arpeggiation there. So then that becomes the next chord of the song. And of course, we return to. Now, uh, I'm not going to go through every single variation that Tom York does, but just to mention some of the really really interesting ones um, you'll see especially if you get the uh, the MIDI track that I'm gonna uh, put up partly for for charity um, and also um, you know just to sell something um, I have transcribed this and you'll hear this oh what was that that was crazy you know so as a song gets more and more intense Tom York starts to add notes and, and leave certain notes out of it, but then change certain notes, and he starts to keep that rhythm the same, but vary it up in a different way by putting these. These double stops in there. Okay, so what is a double stop? Okay, a double stop is, is this technique that you essentially used to thicken up a melodic figure. So you have this note right here. Um, that's it. But it sounds really even thicker and richer when you have this note up top. All right. Um, he does another one here. You hear these two notes? But he has this one. And let's see if you can actually see what I'm playing here. I'm going to bring up the piano tech so you can see the visual. That would have been helpful, Warren. Come on. So you can see on this keyboard right here where I go E5, 4, 3, 4, I think of everything in scale degrees or, or solfege. I think you should too. It's good for relative pitch. And then you have this high B. And you can hear that in that figure there. And he also does one here where he goes E, F sharp, 5, 6. He's got the 8 above it. So he goes. It's called a double stop. And you see it a lot. In guitar as well, you know, people actually go like. So that's like a popular technique to, to thicken up a melody. Um, so you bring in another note above it, typically it's above it, and you move around uh, melodically below it while you keep that high note. So that's a double stop. Um, Tom uses a double stop towards, uh, you know, the latter parts of the song to bring in more color. <clears throat> so... Context is something. Okay, so you can hear how that double stop really brings an, another layer to, to a very just simple little melodic movement there. So, the walkthrough here that I, I wanted to kind of uh, finish this up now with this idea, okay, that Tom emphasizes rhythm over 
no choice, okay? So it's almost like the no choice is not as important as the overall rhythm. Now, the reason that I mention that is <laughs> this idea right here. You're going to see certain bass notes, which I'm scrolling through to find. Certain bass notes are totally missing, like in measure 87, the bass note's not even there, and it comes in later, and then again it's missing, or not here, but uh, it's missing, it's missing earlier than this one. Should have taken little notes, Warren. Good job. Now you look like a noob. But uh, I'll just I'll just play this one. You can hear this. It doesn't sound like it has an anchor to it. If I just isolate it. is actually full of what I'll call idiosyncrasies okay they're not like mistakes maybe there's a few bad notes in there uh, but again it's a demo they you know this is not their kind of final thing they wanted to show to the world but it was this really nice little idea that they sketched that uh, well, they Tom York sketched and within this sketch you see all of these little idiosyncrasies which shows you He's not just playing a chord that he has in mind. He's really trying to put forth this constant, steady flow, this stream of eighth notes. Um, and sometimes the bass notes are there. Sometimes the bass notes aren't. Um, certain notes kind of sound a little weird. Uh, I don't need to point that out, but you'll hear it. You'll hear it in there when you when you uh, get the MIDI track for yourself and you know place it on a VST. And and basically what what you got here is this emphasis of rhythm over note choice, meaning that if you're gonna perform this, if you're gonna do your own version of this and sing this you know simple beautiful melody over it and and represent the song again in your own way. You don't need to play it note for note like Tom to actually achieve the same uh, effect. You can play it and interpret it in such a way where you can choose your own notes and it'll still honor the original, in my mind, right? So you, you honor the original. You, you kind of are trying to pay homage to it. But if you can tweak a few notes here and there, it's still in the spirit of it. And so I'll show you what I mean, and I'll give you a little example of that. So instead of... I can actually do it a little differently. I can go... Um, you know, something like that. So, I don't know, I, I think I ruined it. That was, that was really tasteless, those little choices I made. But don't be as tasteless as me. You know, be, be a little bit more tasteful about the way that you're going to go about playing this song. And uh, keep in mind, it's more about the rhythm than the note choice. Now, there are wrong notes you can play. And Tom has a few sour notes in there, and it's all is forgiven. Um... But the few wrong notes that you can, you can play that you should avoid entirely are notes outside the key of A major. Now, if you don't know what A major is, go look it up. You start on A, and you go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. There are three sharps in the key, so instead of the notes C and D and F, you're going to get C sharp, D sharp, and F sharp. And so when you play those notes in conjunction with these basic four chords of A major, uh, C sharp minor, back to A, and then D major, and then B minor, you are going to come up with a beautiful tapestry that um, evokes the spirit of the song. If you arpeggiate, 
keep a constant eighth note rhythm and allow your melodic variations to be guided by your A major scale there, okay? So your choices all come from the A major scale. And, uh, you know, look at the MIDI file. The MIDI file will show you all the different things that Tom York does, note for note, uh, accurate. That is something that I'm very proud of. It took me a long time. And I hope you get uh, something really insightful and cool from this. Um, let's just see. I took some notes. Okay, I, I tune this, in case anybody wants to know, I tune this to 452 hertz, which means that it's 12 hertz above your standard concert pitch of 440. So it's sharp. It sounds very out of tune. If you go listen to the original, it's, it's pretty much 452. I don't know for sure, but uh, it sounds right to me. Um, piano tech is, is great. It doesn't run on samples. It's very, very lean in terms of like how it consumes your CPU. And uh, it's, it's a piano modeling software. That's why it doesn't need any samples. It's really great. You can go look at it. Um, the sustain pedal, really use that to let those high notes ring out. Make sure you wash out the previous chord before uh, the next chord starts with that new uh, bass note. And uh, keep in mind that there are larger takeaways uh, uh, for this performance. One is Tom emphasizes the rhythm over the note choice. And the rhythm is always this constant stream of, of eighth notes. Even when he misses an eighth note, you, you know that it's supposed to be there. Um, these are four basic chords that form the foundation. And the improvisation is drawn from the uh, A major scale. Um, one nice technique to keep in mind is he uses double stops here and there to, to add more uh, thickness to these melodic variations. And this song is reminiscent of like spinning plates. A lot of the same chord shapes, uh, a lot of the same arpeggiation uh, style um, in that song. So that's why I think it's, uh, it's cannibalized. Uh, also, like spinning plates is it's not exactly in the same key but it's very close to how i made my millions which is in the key of a like spinning plates is in the key of e there's only one note different between the key of a and the key of e they're very close to each other so uh, it makes a lot of sense why a lot of the same chords would show up because there's only one note that would be different between those two keys there so um hope this has been helpful um, sharing it with anybody, just tell them to skip through the first nine and a half minutes because this guy talks way too much. Um, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. This channel is about to get a lot more interesting this year. Um, I, I got lots of stuff rolled up my sleeves. It's like it's like it's about to fall out of my sleeves. There's just like things just stuck up in here and they're, they're gonna fall out this year. And it's going to be really cool. So stay tuned. Find me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Warren Music. Twitter, Warren Lane. Skype, Warren Lane. Just just come holla, all right? Holla at your boy. And uh, keep making love. Uh, I mean music. Keep making music. All right, take it easy.